Kang the Conqueror is without a doubt one of the most interesting characters in Marvel simply because he is so complex. Take a second and think about it. Who is Kang? And while it's true that he has committed some atrocious crimes, is he entirely unredeemable? Could all of this bloodshed and conquering have been avoided? In this video, we are going to dive deep into the psychology of Kang. Make sure you stay till the end for a bonus fact. Now, when I say Kang, I mean all of the Kangs. So I hope you won't get too confused during this video. Now, in order to truly understand someone, we need to put ourselves in their shoes. So in order to do that, we need to go back to the one point in time that all the Kangs have in common. Actually, if you are watching this in the 21st century, we need to go forward in time to the 30th century. Before Kang, before Immortus, before Ramatat, there was just Nathaniel Richards, a boy who lived in a civilization that had achieved the peak of science, a utopia where people didn't need to touch each other, a world with no conflict, no hunger, no wars. You could literally get your head cut off and be able to get reattached in a matter of months. In a nutshell, the 30th century is the perfect world, right? Hmm, not so sure about that. What keeps us going in life are our longings and our aspirations. Or sometimes it is our fears that keeps us going, that give us a sense of purpose. But what if you lived in a world where there was nothing to look forward to because everything had already been done. A world without any dangers. What is the purpose of such a life? No matter what you do, it means nothing. How would you feel living in such a world? Would you be depressed? Maybe you will be very nonchalant about everything. Or would you be the type to be angry at the world? You see, Nathaniel Richards longed for a life that meant something, a life full of adventures, a life where he did something that mattered. Now, an opportunity would present itself to Nathaniel Richards in the form of time travel. He would finally be able to leave this boring world and go to see more exciting things. If you lived in such a world and your only ticket out was time travel, would you do it? Think about it, realistically. Yes, your world is boring, purposeless, and all you want is to get the hell out of here. But what about your family? What about your loved ones? Time travel is dangerous. You may never see them again. Something could happen to them while you're away. If you travel to the past, you could even cause your parents to never have been born in the first place by accidentally messing with the timeline. There are so many factors to consider before making such a major decision, yet Nathaniel Richards didn't hesitate for a second. This is the first indicator that he was predisposed to become a conqueror. His desires for conquest overrides almost everything. You see, when you truly desire something, it consumes you. You don't feel right if you're not acting on it. It's really hard to describe, but it's not merely wanting. It's much stronger. So one could say that Nathaniel Richards was composed to leave everything behind. But then again, who knows? Maybe he actually tried to convince his family to come with him. Or maybe he was planning on going on a short trip and coming back to his timeline, we will never know. And it's easy to judge him, but what about Iron Lad? He was not a power hungry tyrant. No, Iron Lad had an encounter with Kang, his future self in the 30th century. At the time, Iron Lad 
was Nathaniel Richards. But when he saw the horrible things that his future self would do, he would vow to never become Kank and did everything in his power to prevent that future from happening. The man even went out of his way to go back in time and form a group of heroes and eventually prepare to protect the world from Kank. The man who can't escape his destiny. Do you believe in destiny? Do you believe that everything is already written in the stars, whether it is true or not? That shouldn't be an excuse for not trying. For Nathaniel Richards, there was no other destiny than becoming Kang. No matter how he approached the issue, fate will force him to walk the path of the conqueror. I feel like Kang is one of those forces that keep the balance of the multiverse in check. That is the reason why Iron Lad eventually resigned to his fate and became Kang. Kang is so powerful, but what's the point of having so much power if you can't even control your own fate? Is all this power a blessing or is it a curse? The man is literally a victim of his own power. A man forever at war with himself, literally. Let's say he wants to stop. A variant would come for his timeline. And let's say this is a peaceful Kang. He would have to witness his timeline get destroyed or keep running for the rest of his life. Or the other option is to fight and get rid of all of his variants. It's so complicated. I don't think there are any alternatives for him than to do what he does. When I was watching Ant-Man 3, I noticed something about Kang. His eyes are often watery, but the irony is that he never sheds a single tear. Imagine what a burden his soul must carry. After all he's done, the massacres, the genocides, those eyes are that of a man who is in pain. A man that is lying to himself to convince himself that he is doing the right thing. In the end, Kang will never even be able to get the one thing he truly desire. A life with Ravonna Rainslayer, her love and compassion. No matter how much he goes back in time or forward even, she is fated to forever be out of his reach. Even though the love is reciprocated, he cannot change his fate. And eventually Kang accepts that too. Again, he must fulfill his role, he must keep conquering. I see a lot of people say that he who remains is the quote-unquote good Kang. But I think that couldn't be further from the truth. He who remains is the variant that actually did the most killing. How do you think he won the multiverse war? He who remains is just tired of the chaos and madness. That's why he created a system to keep another multiversal war from happening. Any Kang that would have won that war would eventually become like he who remains. You see, it's not hard to see that Kang is not really the definition of a good guy. But the true question is, does he have a choice in the first place? What would you do differently if you were him? Let me know in the comment section. Now, if you are still here at this point, you are the real deal. And to reward you for sticking with me, here is a bonus fact. Did you know that Kang once crossed over with Star Trek in the comics? This story takes place following the events of the Star Trek First Contact movie in 1998. Kang brings the crew from the Enterprise to the X-Men's timeline. However, the latter two end up banding together in order to fight Kang. Would you imagine that in a live action movie? That would be crazy. So yeah, that was it. Thank you for listening to me and until the next time.